getting ready to screw a set of spark plugs into an older vehicle today. But before I do that, I need to measure this gap, the distance between the center electrode and the ground electrode. Now, the spark plug works by applying a voltage here, which goes through the plug, and then that voltage has to jump across this gap to go to ground. When it jumps, it creates a spark. If it's very easy to jump, so the gap is small, the spark is small. If it's very hard to jump, then it might create a big gap or a big spark going across that gap, or it might not jump at all. You just don't know. We need the right amount of spark to ignite the air fuel mixture, so this measurement needs to be set to whatever the factory specification is. Now, this is a tool that I can use to both set and measure the spark plug gap. This is an old fashioned style wire feeler gauge. And you see that it's got a bunch of numbers on the outside diameter. Those numbers are the thickness of the wire in thousandths of an inch. On the back side, I also have numbers that correspond and that's the thickness of the wire in millimeters. So I can measure either in millimeter or in thousandths of an inch depending on my specification. So this spark plug should be at 40 thousandths of an inch. I'm going to start by going to this 30 thousandths and that does not go through there easily. So I know that I need to open that gap up to get it to the proper 40 thousandths of an inch measurement. Now I can use this right here to do that. I simply take this, put the plug electrode into that saddle like that, okay, and then I pull it open. So now I just open it up and you can see I open it up a bunch. 40 thousandths of an inch is my target, so I go to 40 thousandths and that's way too big. So now I could take this and I can close it like that by pushing the electrode towards the middle and then we'll measure again. Still a little too big. And that's getting closer. And that right there is just about right. When I insert the wire and I pull the wire through there, I have now what's known as a magnetic drag. Okay, it goes through there. I feel that it pulls through there and the feel is similar to what I would get if I was dragging a magnet along a piece of steel. That's why we call it magnetic drag. All right, so the wire feeler gauge for opening and closing works really well. Now, I have this style here. This is a blade type gauge. And just like the wire gauge, it's got the thickness in numbers on the front is inches, on the back is millimeter. I use this when I'm dealing with a spark plug that is more along this design. This is a platinum spark plug. And you can see how small that center electrode is. Platinum and iridium plugs have a very small center electrode and the electrode itself is actually really brittle. It's very easy to break these. So trying to get a measurement with the wire, you can damage the spark plug. That's why you use a blade style like this. Take the plug, put the blade in between the gap, and start rotating it until you get to your thickest point. Right there, I'm measuring about 55 thousandths of an inch. Flip it over, and I can get my millimeter measurement, which is about 1.35 millimeter. So those are the measurements that I've got. Now, if I wanted to close this, I could do that, but I can't really do it easily with this, okay? And I don't really want to just start banging it on the top of a vise or something else hard. So I would use this tool to close it like that. And then I can remeasure and we can see what we've got. Okay, so I close that up to about 45. All right. I can also measure 
using feeler gauges. And I know it's kind of hard to see the numbers there, but each one of those feeler gauges has a measurement on it, 25 thousandths, 0.635 millimeter. If I wanted a 40 thousandths gap, I don't have a 40 thousandths uh, feeler gauge here. So what I could do is I could make a 40 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge by combining a couple of gauges. So in this case, maybe I take this 19 thousandths and this 21 thousandths, I combine them. Now I have something that's 40 thousandths of an inch thick and I can use that to measure a gap. So let's take a look at this plug. I want this plug at about 40 thousandths of an inch, but it's bigger than that and I could see physically that I've got a gap there. I could use this to either open or close that gap, but I want a certain amount of consistency and maybe precision. I'll use this tool here instead. Now this is kind of hard to see in use uh, because of the lighting, but what I'm going to do is take this, I'm going to put the body of the spark plug into that block. Then what I'm going to do is take my feeler gauges set to whatever it is that I want and I'm going to put them into the gap. I'm going to take this whole thing and set it down into this tool like that. Now I know this is hard to see, but what I've got is the ground electrode against this stop, the feeler gauge is in the gap, and the body in this adjusting block. So once I've got that set up like that, I take my thumb screw here, and I start to thread this block in until it stops. When it stops turning, I stop turning. I don't try and force it or do anything stupid like that. Back it off, pull it out, remeasure. It's a nice 40 thousandths of an inch. They've got good magnetic drag. This one's been adjusted. So there's some different methods of measuring and adjusting your spark plugs. Don't forget about your spark plugs. I uh, see an awful lot of cold start situations where a vehicle won't start easily when it's cold outside. And if your plug gap is really wide, that could be creating it. If you've got a vehicle that's missing uh, and your plug gaps are off, that could be creating the misfire. So don't forget about your plug gaps. Check them, adjust them, or just replace the plugs when necessary.